Uh, here, lecture 19 is uh, uh, very close to the previous lecture, but it's a little bit different way. Here, uh, what is evolution-based theology? What is evolution-based theology? This tells us many Christians, including those theologians and pastors, who believe the doctrine of evolution uh, based on their belief in evolution theory, they built up uh, Christian doctrines. I will uh, describe some of the key issues uh, in relation to that uh, doctrines here. You will see uh, evolution-based theology, so those people, as I told you, are male people and post-male people uh, belong to this theology here. Okay, As I told you before, uh, the first two chapters of uh, Genesis are the same as others. Okay. That's uh, eternity here, eternity. But when it comes down to fall of Adam, fall of Adam here, fall of Adam, we know they, they do not know what year that happened, they put down in a in question. Remember that? Question. And the distance between the fall of Adam to Abraham. Now, I will put down this way. It's okay. I'm going to erase it my in purpose that period is called it's unknown unknown long period so Abraham's birth birth of Abraham still unknown that's a long period this is chapters Genesis Chapters 3 to 11. That's a long period. You got it? Then, from Abraham, actually, what year Abraham, B.C.? 2166. They believe this one. So Abraham, Abraham time is a beginning of history. Okay, so now Jesus is born, see, B.C. 4. So now they believe from Abraham to Jesus. The story is where? In Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. The genealogy from Abraham to Jesus, recorded here in Matthew chapter 1. So they believe this is actually how many thousand years? They believe this is actual 2,000 years. Got it? Now, also, now we are here in 2020, present time. So here, 2020, so that means 
present time is present. So Abraham was born from today, how many years ago? 4,000 years ago. They believe that. 4,000 years ago, right here. It's a history. History began right here in Abraham. Now, here, but you remember their millennium kingdom, millennium, is starting right here. Millennium, all the way, all the way to where? Is the second coming. This is unknown for a very long period. So millennium is it's a long period, unknown. So now we've got two here. Over here is unknown long period. Over here is unknown long period. Then after the second coming, then here, it's a revelation, a new world and new heaven, 21 to 22. See, this one period is the same as this period. Returning back. Can you see this? Okay. Now, this period we have identical here. First two chapters of Genesis, last two chapters of Revelation, going back to. Got it? However, in between, in between, how many years? How many years? Here, from here to here, from here to here, how many years? Then, okay, it's unknown. Unknown, long period, long time. Write that down then. How many years? Unknown, long time. And also, they call this the kingdom of God. This is what they call the kingdom of God. Also, they call this, this world. Then how about above world? Above world is right here. This is above world. Eternal world. Also, over here is above world. So there are two kinds of world. Above world, which is eternal world, and the time world calls this world. Okay? But this world is long period of time based on their belief evolution theology 
with the notion of the fall of Adam and age of uh, Earth, planet Earth is how many years? 4.5 billion years. Over here. 4.5 billion years. Now, these people, they call this period from second com first coming to second coming. This period they call church period. Some people believe this church period is also the kingdom of God. Kingdom Some people, in a narrow sense, kingdom of God. So some Amiel people and Posmi people call the kingdom of God. When they say kingdom of God, often refers to this period. Some said kingdom of God refers to this period. Whole entire period. So there are two kinds of expressions in the kingdom of God. So to, you got to understand this so that you can make distinctions. When someone said kingdom of God, it might, it may refer to this entire period or only limited to Church period. So they call church period is what? They call, this is church period, they call millennium kingdom. Are you with me? Millennial kingdom. That's church period. Not an entire Period. So they consider millennialism, millennial kingdom starts at first coming, ending where? Second coming. It's complicated? Yes, no. A little bit. That's why I, I, I review it, review it, review it with a different way of approachment. Okay? Now, here, are you clear? Okay. Now, then, who believes in this? Who? Who believes this? Who believe this? Number one, Amiel people. Okay? And post meal people. Now, here, number two, what denominations? What denominations in line with these teachings? Number one, Roman Catholics. Number two, Orthodox. Orthodox churches. Who are they? Russian Orthodox? Greek? Orthodox, Armenian Orthodox, Egyptian Coptic Orthodox. There are many Orthodox 
in the eastern part of Europe, Ethiopian in Africa, Syrian, there are many Hungarian, Czechoslovakian, all kinds of Orthodox churches. Okay, they all believe in this evolution-based theology. Now, who else? In here, Protestant. Protestant. Now, in the Protestant churches, here, a Lutheran. Lutheran churches. I would say around 80% Lutherans belong to this. And Anglicans. I would say around 80% Anglicans follow these doctrines. And Presbyterians. I would say around 80% today. Presbyterian. Korean Presbyterians are di di different. Koreans are about half and half, around 50 50. And Baptist. Baptist, I would say around 50%. And Methodist. I would say around 80%. And Charismatics. Charismatics and Pentecostals. They, I would say, around 20%. You can see these major Protestants. See, it... Roman Catholics around 100%. Orthodox churches around 100%. So you can see very few Protestants, very few Protestant denominations not believing in that theology. We, I, including I here, not believing in that teaching. So we are minority people. Minority people. That you would encounter with those Christians who, who, who are in favor of this kind of teachings surrounding you. Therefore, you just teach your fellow Christians how this theology make up with and how the other theology make up with not only this, when you teach, you teach lesson 17, lesson 18, lesson and 19 in sequence. You cannot just teach them this one alone. Are you with me? Yeah. So let me tell you again. The 
evolution-based theology people, they, they interpret this fall of Adam to Abraham is long distance. Not only that, from first coming of Jesus to second coming of Jesus, it's a long distance. Got it? Yeah. Therefore, here, from the fall of Adam to second coming of Jesus, how many years? We do not know. Very long time, long distance. Now, these people call that long distance is called kingdom of God. This world. So they don't consider kingdom of God is above there. They focusing on the kingdom of God, this world. That's the major considerations. So we consider kingdom of God uh, refers to two sides, above wall and this wall. Okay? But these people uh, often uh, consider, okay, uh, think, believe, only limited to this world, which is not 7,000 years. This world is very long period of unknown time. Now, in the midst of this concept, now here between first coming and second coming, okay, that period, they call it church period. Also, there is an unknown long time. Are you with me? Church period. Also, it calls what? Millennial kingdom. Okay? Millennial kingdom cites this period, not entire period. Millennial kingdom. It's complicated? I hope not. And then, who believe this? What denominations? Right here. Amil and post mill people. That's why you should know the eschatological four doctrines. It's very important. Those doctrines govern your theology. It controls your theology. That's why end time doctrines are very, very crucial uh, in building up your theology and, and discerning people's theology. So when someone says this, this, oh, then, oh, he must, he must be in this camp. Okay? So it, it, the, the purposes of, you know, teaching all this, you know, complicated theology is to make you be able to distinct the people. That is a purpose. I'm not saying who is bad or who is wrong or who is good and, and so on, okay? Distinctive spirit is most important based on Bible teachings. Now, here again, what denominations? Roman Catholics, 100%. Orthodox churches, 100%. And majority, Protestant denominations, majority, 80%. And with an exception of these charismatics and Pentecostals here, the majority are believing in other doctrines. Although I am not a, a pure uh, charismatics nor Pentecostals, but I am in line with their uh, practices. So that's the 
my introduction to this specific topics. <laughs>